Oh, I didn't hear about that. I saw it today. Huh. Yeah, still an area of controversy. But regardless of whatever happens, it's good to see that, you know, there is that open door there. Yeah, that's that's kind of a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Once the store closes, it's going to be gone forever for missions. Um, I mean, there will be other doors I'm sure that God opens hopefully, but um, this is a golden opportunity, complete. So this is just a, a thing that something so a lot of people fear in their hearts, and I want you guys to think about this. What if God calls you to do something and you miss it? Have you ever had that fear? What if what if what if you already missed it and you just didn't even know that you missed it? Do you know what I mean? Have you, have you, most people have had this fear. Um, how do you know what God's will is? This is an actual question. How do you know what God's will is? For those of you who weren't here last Sunday, um, I mentioned Gideon <laughs> just a few times. <laughs> but anyways. Well, I think one thing you need to do is see if what you're feeling or hearing or whatever doesn't match up with his word. Hmm. But that sounds too concrete. I can't believe that. <laughs> Okay. Anything else? How do you know if uh, how do you know what God's will is? Kind of a hard question, huh? Yeah. Christians have been pounding their brains out about this one for a long time. Well, I think God has to, you know, a, you know, a will for each one of us individually. He has his will for all of us, and we know what his will for everybody is. Stop your crazy talk. <laughs> and that's to be saved. Okay. That's his will. And then his will for us that are saved is to get That's too simple. I didn't hear anything about golden tablets. How, how, yeah. how, how he yeah. goes about using us, now that's... I think that whole uh, casting lots thing. <laughs> I haven't found a lot of lots though. I got around to it. <laughs> I stopped the thing with dice. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I think you guys have had some time to think about this because this is probably something you guys have all. all thought about before I'd imagine I have yet to meet a Christian who hasn't talked about this so let's talk about some unbiblical concepts that go hand in hand with this um, before we actually talk about the concept itself first off luck I know people talk a lot about luck but luck really isn't so too much in the Bible if you notice um, it seems like maybe Old Testament you know Jews didn't even believe in it is a possibility, but anyways, um, luck relates with the idea of karma. Basically, good luck, or you know, it, it's 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 like a um, kind of a kind of a pagan belief, you know, that kind of like um, the, the the good fuzzies come to you by the gods, or you know, by d different th forces in nature, depending on you know. Does that kind of make sense? Kind of kind of like karma, um, but however, it can also be seen by a lot of people as a random thing. You know, just like, oh, for whatever reason, you are blessed. You have good luck. The straw was drawn. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Um, and, and like I say, this really isn't something that we see in the Bible. It's saying an idea that we don't really see a whole lot in the Bible, but that people kind of relate with um, with God's will is the idea of chance. And chance is the idea of a complete random happenstance. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, okay, if you got that job that you were wanting, it's complete, you know, it's chance. 
if, um, you know, whatever. Uh, they, they found out about Chuck's kidneys uh, uh, and were able to, you know, save him from death. That's a chance. You know what I mean? Just It just happened, you know. A lot of people ha have this kind of idea. And this is another thing that we really don't see a whole lot of in the Bible. Um, but oh, I'm sorry. But that takes us to the third idea, and that's fate. And you even hear people talk about not tempting fate. But fate isn't really something that we see in the Bible either. We see predestination, but I'll talk about that in a minute. We already already kind of talked about that a little bit um, a couple weeks ago. Um, and the idea is that there is this kind of cosmic power that makes everything happen that happens. You know what I mean? Basically, it's all destined to happen. If somebody got in a car wreck, it was fate. That car was just there at just the right time. It was all fate, you know. Um, kind of like this, just this, this cosmic madness that just causes everything to, to to untimely or timely happen for whatever outcome. It, it, not really for any good outcome, just for an outcome. Um, but th once again, these three ideas we just don't see a whole lot in the Bible. Um, but then to make things even more confusing. The proverb says a few things that, that can can kind of throw a, a wrench into the uh, cogs, I guess you could say. Proverbs 16.9 is where I'll start, and it says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Now, what people have taken this to mean oftentimes is... Excuse me. Excuse me, sorry. Is... Basically, people are always striving to do something, but God's going to thwart it all unless he, unless it's his divine-inspired way, and then he's going to cause that to happen. And that's not really what he's saying here. If you look, he, he's saying that people desire to do things. You know, it, it's, it's in their heart. They, they set something in their heart to do it, and, and they desire it. But ultimately, it's the Lord who establishes someone in the way that they go. You know what I mean? It, it's like, okay, for instance, pastor with the men's center. He, he had ideas and he, has, he had thoughts, but who is it that's actually causing it all to come out to work? Yeah. God. God's the one who's going before him and, and causing things to work out. The um, Oasis. This is – how long has it been? Ten years? Somewhere around. Somewhere around ten years, Chuck has had this idea on, on his head. The plans of his heart. But throughout the course of time, God was able to establish it as a thing that was able to happen. See? The plans of the heart, but God establishes the steps. It's basically the idea of this. You don't have to worry that your life that God doesn't care about your life, as you as, as you live and as you you're you're doing your thing and everything. God is the one who establishes your prosperity comes from God. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Uh, Proverbs says elsewhere. Here's a, another good example. The, it's in how does it say it? It is God's glory to conceal a matter, but it's it's man's glory to reveal it. Okay, did you know that physics and all these things that man, that hum, humans are, are figuring out, God created it? Yeah. And did you know that he hid it from just the uh, – you had to actually search these things out to find it? Like that the smallest particle is like what, an atom or whatever? So, I mean, we just discovered this. And it was – the person who found these things out, they're held as, oh, these people are geniuses. But it was God who knew it all along. See what I mean? So it's God who, who kind of allowed that to be revealed at the time. See what I mean? Like Bill Gates, for instance, God found it, saw it fit to establish the path and the ways. See what I mean? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So then you hop down to 33. The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every. <laughs> that's funny that you just said that. <laughs> um, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Now what he's talking about here is something in the old in the Old Testament law where they had these things. I think they're called the Urim and the Thummim. I remember correctly, and the priests were instructed to cast it to discern what God's uh, will was in different things, um, and basically to hear from God. Does that make sense? And so they would cast it, and God would ensure that the, that as they cast it, it would land on the answer that they wanted. It was a very simple yes/no kind of format. God, do you want us to do this? You cast the lots, and how it landed would be a year yes or you know and that's what he's talking about right here it's not just randomness that that, that these that, that, that these priests are doing it's something that god has god is working out to speak to them okay now how does that apply to us today well some people um for instance john piper um mentioned a couple of weeks ago on desiring god his website um that this is basically saying that there is no such thing as luck which i think that that is true 
you know, I think that that, that is true. Um, but I, I'm not quite sure my opinion, so I'm just not going to really include my own personal opinion on this. Um, but uh, basically what, what John Piper said that he thought he was saying was um, that, that there is no, no random thing that happens. Okay. Um, so then 21, 1. The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. So, I mean, it, it makes it sound like... Well, let me give an example. The book of Exodus, okay? The Israelites cry out to God to save them, right? And God sends Moses, but Pharaoh hardens his heart, right? But then it says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. See? And so there's just these things that are a little ambiguous that kind of make people over-assume, I guess would be the right word with God's will. Like we're all, none of us really have free will at all, basically, that kind of an idea. And I don't really think that that's what he's talking about. I, just, I think that he's more talking about that, well, for instance, it says here the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. Basically, who's the most powerful person in the land at the time? At this time, the king. But at the end of the day, God can put, can get whatever outcome he wants. See what I mean? He's still in control. And I think that's more of what he's talking about here. I don't think he's really saying that every single person doesn't have free will because God is forcing them to do the actions that they did. Does that make sense? Does it, you guys are giving me a lot of blank stares and just staring at the ground. So does that kind of make sense? Okay. Well, for the risk of, of boring you and beating a dead horse, I'm going to plow ahead then. Um, so that gets, gets us to some, some more more biblically, biblically grounded ideas. And the first is the natural events. Okay. In life, there are natural events. I have here um, arrested for a crime. If you break the law, you're probably going to be arrested, right? I mean, that's a natural event, right? I mean, unless there isn't a government like that country we were looking at last last week. Um, uh, was it Somalia or was it Sudan? Somalia. I, I get the two confused. It was Somalia, right? Yeah, where it has like virtually no government. Yeah, <laughs> the exception to the rule. Um, hit by a car and walk in traffic. Well, you know, we we look both ways before we walk. We you don't just walk blindly out into the street and say, if it's God's will for me to live, right? <laughs> right? Like you wouldn't do that, right? So it's the same kind of principle. There's a natural event of, of things. In fact, I'm I'm convinced that there are some people who have who have died before God, you know, wanted them to die because they just didn't take care of their bodies. You know what I mean? Well, I'm gonna eat McDonald's every day, and then when my body, and by the way, Chuck wasn't eating McDonald's every day. Okay. <laughs> then when my kidneys shut down, you know, I'm gonna say, oh well, it's God's will for me to go now. Well, <laughs> God does expect for you to think and exercise and these kinds of things. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So um, there's the natural events. And then, well, I'll get to that in a second. But let me follow this whole natural events thing. God's will doesn't remove my need to think. Remember, Scott uh, asked this question a couple years back. He said about the uh, that movie about the Crusades, um, Kingdom or um, Kingdom of Heaven or. I don't remember what it was. It was something like that, but it was about the Crusades. And basically the soldiers were running out there and they were saying, if it's God's will for me to, for me to live or to die. Well, that has nothing to do with God's will or not. That has to do with you're going out to battle and just, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you can pray for protection, you know what I mean? But ultimately, I'm pretty convinced that the Crusades weren't in God's will. So to go do something that God didn't command you to do and then die from it, I wouldn't say that that's God's will, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, um, well, going back to the whole idea of exercise, has, does God's will free you from thinking? No. You're still supposed to think, should I be exercising? Yes. Should I not eat McDonald's every day? Yes. So, I mean, like, these are things that you're supposed to think about this, you know, and, and, and even throughout the New Testament parables, you see Jesus constantly, rec um, not recommend, um, commend those people who thought things through. The shrewd steward, for instance. Remember that? God, Jesus praised him, even though what he did was you know, immoral, because he thought ahead and used his brain. See what I mean? So, um, not everything happens for a reason. This is... this the. Not everything happens for a reason. 
that means that every time somebody gets raped, God planned it for some vast re what? No, not everything happens for a reason, but God turns things to his glory. God can use whatever's in your past, whatever happens to you, for, to grow you into the character of Christ. He can do that. Like, once again, the example of Joseph. His brother sold him to slavery, but God turned it into a thing where he was able to save his whole family through it. And he says, what you intended for evil, God has turned into something good. A great example. See what I mean? So, um, not everything happens for a reason. However, God causes everything that needs to happen. Does that make sense? For instance, Jesus coming to die for us, that's something that needed to happen. So he caused it to happen. There's nothing that could have prevented that from happening. One day Jesus is going to come back, and there's nothing that's going to stop that from happening. It, it'll happen sooner or later, depending on what the church does in, in evangelism, but it's going to happen either way. Does that make sense? Kind of? Okay. So uh, are, are we kind of understanding the differences there on that? Because we're going to go to go to the breakdown of God's will. Breakdown. Okay. Um, there's ordained events. This is this is uh, this is the breakdown of God's will. Okay. There's those ordained things. These are things that are destined to happen. You cannot do anything to change. God's will has predestined it, and it's just how it's going to be. Saying coming. But then there's things that are allowed events. Rape, war, famine. These are things that God doesn't necessarily desire, but allows it to happen, like the persecution of Job. Okay, he's al he allows these things to happen. He, he allows everything to happen that, that's happening. Because remember, he's still in complete control. Um, <clears throat> and it's at this point that people say, then, then how is God good? Well, once again, if God is good, then he must leave the, uh, leave the opportunity for you to choose for yourself, unless he wants to make you into a robot. So... You can't have both, you know. Um, then there's natural events. These are cause, effect, or nature. Okay, like for instance, a hurricane um, or tornado. Now, God can cause those things to destroy people, of course, you know, obviously. But he has created the world to function on cycles. Okay? Like, it's not so much a miracle. We were talking about this before. It's not a miracle when people have babies. That's a natural event. Now, if the woman was physically unable to conceive and then she had a baby, ah, there's the miracle. Yeah. See what I mean? Uh, when the sun came up this morning, that wasn't a miracle. That was something that God set up in the natural order of events. Okay? I know this is all very dry and boring, but I'm saying it for a reason, and we're getting there, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that obviously our job then becomes about obedience. You know, not so much about trying to find some mystical light, but about obedience. When God tells you to do something, you do it. When I was younger, pastors used to always say about finding God's will, read the Bible. And I thought, what does that mean? It doesn't say, hey, Michael, go do this. Yeah. It always tells me stories and tells me about theology. I completely misunderstood, and I'll get to that in a minute. But um, So God guides and causes and knows, and knows everything that will happen. Okay, but God does not dictate every step. When you should eat today, for instance. You don't wake up in the morning and say, God, is it your will that I eat breakfast? <laughs> See, that make, does that make sense? Not only that, but there's nowhere in the Bible that would suggest that God's will is so excessive. Okay? Because um, there are some people that are convinced that every single stage of their life is planned out, and they have to not miss any minute of it. You know what I mean? Like... When I'm 20, God wants me to leave this church and go somewhere else. When I'm 30, God wants me to God wants me to have my first kid. When I'm four, like, whoa, whoa, where do you get this from? You know what I mean? Like, eh. uh, in fact, there's a book that I'm going to recommend for you guys at the end of this lesson um, by a, a very talented uh, scholar um, who who I think ad uh, addresses this pretty well. But I'll wait. Um, <clears throat> So what he commands must be obeyed. I mean, this is all pretty simple. Well, so what happens is when we, when God commands us to do something, like for instance, um, make disciples. Okay, there, there's the command. All right, um, and we disobey that, which is either not doing it when he tells you to, or just flat out saying no. Okay, and when we do that, um, it causes um, things. To happen in our life that, that that bring us around to repentance, and obviously God uses different ways. Like for instance, God's kindness is a big way of leading people to repentance. Um, so, 
Everybody understand that? So, in summation, all that I really want you to get from all that nonsense that I just went over. Not everything happens for a reason. Not everything is on some set set course, okay? God wants you to use your brain. And that's pretty much the whole summation of all that. So that takes us to just some scripture here. And if we could have other people turn to these two, um, who would like to do that? Anybody would like to? You? Anybody else? Okay. So, Serena, you turn to Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, and I'll turn to Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? Or basically, what is God's will for you to do? Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. See, I mean, like, I think that this whole finding God's will, we've turned very mystic. You know, where there's this one thing that God has for you in your life, and you have to make sure that you don't miss that one thing. I think we've made this a little bit too complicated. Go ahead with yours. It was Ephesians 5, 15 through 17? Yes, yes it was. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. See? Now what's the will of, the will of the Lord? To take to take those moments, and, see what I mean? To take those moments and, 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 and what, how does he word it there? Making Make the most of it. He didn't say, now go pray in some dark and secluded thing until you receive some divine light from above showing you your mystic will from God. It's Basically, when we pray prayers like that, God, show me your will for, the, for you know, basically what we're saying is, this isn't good enough. And where you've placed me in life isn't good enough. I need something more. I need something more fabulous. I'm sorry, more fabulous. <laughs> Um, I'll read 1 Peter 2.15. Go to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. 1 Peter 2.15 says this. For this is the will of God. He's about to tell you what the will of God is. That by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Basically, that you would do good, and it would have an impact on people. Yeah. Okay? That was the big reveal of God's will. Go ahead with yours. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So again with something that isn't very mystical at all. James 1.5 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who, generously to all, who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. Once again, th these aren't real mystic ideas here. Uh, Psalm 119, 105, do you want to go to that? Because you've got your phone and I think it'd be faster. Psalm 119? Yeah, verse See, so that talks about how God's will, God, God's word, shows us the way that we should go. Because if we have good, the remember we were talking about this. If we have good theology, if we have beliefs firmly grounded in God's truth, we're going to make decisions that we know to be true. We've, I, I've given the example a hundred billion times of the guy who thought it was God's will to marry that woman who was already married. Well, God's, wo God's word would be able to enlighten his path, wouldn't it? Because we know that that's, that's, not, that's not right. See what I mean? Th this comes from a fault, which we're actually going to talk about in the next couple weeks, about relationships. And people have an idea with relationships that there's one person that is meant for them. Yeah, Did you know that there's soulmate. not there's not a soulmate? There's no such thing as that? Did you know that? And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what the Bible actually teaches. When I, I chose Gracie, I didn't I, I didn't receive an angel angelic vision. See what I mean? It, 
you, you know, Ben could go marry some some prostitute for you know, and that wouldn't be God's will. It'd be His choice in a woman. See what I mean? Does that make sense? So we'll get to that in in in, in here in a couple weeks. But the, these a couple of these lessons really go hand in hand. We talked about salvation. We talked about remember Calvinism and Arminianism, which goes along with this, which goes along with the relationship one that we're going to talk about in a few weeks. Um, First Thessalonians uh, says this: uh, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. That each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. And I'm going to stop there on that one. But so there's the will of God that you abstain from sec from immorality. Okay, but then uh, five three or five. 18, actually. Uh, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in everything. Are you seeing mm -hmm. what the will of God is, as revealed in Scripture? Mm -hmm. Giving thanks. L abstaining from the evils of the world. See, I mean, these are the things that, 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 that God's will actually is. But then there's something called a specific calling. And sometimes, I'll just go ahead and reveal everything on the on the sheet here. Boop. Sometimes God calls people to specific tasks. Okay? But it's not it's it's rarely, if ever, their whole life, and it's not everyone who receives this. Okay? Exodus 3.10, God calls Moses. Specifically, he calls Moses. Okay? And that was for the rest of Moses' life. But at this point, he was, I think, around 8, 80? Yeah, when we called him. Yeah, it was 80, right? I had a little bit of a brain fart there. By the time that Moses was 80, God called him for the next 40 years of service until the time that he was to die at about 120. Okay? And Aaron, likewise, was called. Okay? But in 35, 30 to 34, God says very specifically that he, he called two people... Bezalel and Aholiab mm -hmm. to do the work of making the things, and and he it also says that God specifically gave them so that they would be able to teach to others too. Okay, um, something that was that was given to them by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit for a task. Okay, however, it does not say that to, about everybody in Israel, does it? We just have a handful of people, right? God calls some people to special callings, like for instance, a pastor. But I'll give you a story here. I knew a missionary once who said that he never got a calling. He was in Bible school one year, and he, he, saw, he saw a need in another country, and so he said, well, I guess I'm going to go over there. And so he went. Um, Andy Stanley, he said that when he was young, he, he asked his dad, he's, he's like, how do you know if you're called to go into the ministry? And his dad's like, well, you know, you'll just, you'll know. And he's like, well, can I volunteer? Because I don't know. And that's a great example. And, you know, nothing in that is wrong. You know, it's not like God's going to say, no, I don't want you to fulfill the Great Commission in the end of Matthew. <laughs> I don't think God's going to say that. Um, however, there is something else, though. For instance, uh, we, we talked about this before. Those other countries where there's a need for someone to go, but God hasn't called me to there right now, has he? He's called me to here right now, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So there's where the difference is, though. If God has already called you spe specifically to a place, yeah. he's not going to just – you shouldn't just randomly leap off to some other place. You should stick it out until God says, leave. Huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> and you shouldn't be looking for an opportunity either. Um, okay, and then in Judges uh, 6.14, Gideon receives a special call from God to be a judge. Okay, does that make sense? So these are specific – Specific examples of of some people have a special calling. Um, it's usually not all their life, however, and it's usually not everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. usually in the New Testament era, it is by the uh, revealing of the Holy Spirit, whereas before it was by a lot of different factors. Um, so the will of God has more to do with obedience in the here and now, and not so much to do with a special one thing that you were called to do. And something else I found biblically is if you miss that thing that God's called you to do, you would know that you missed it. Because God would reveal it to you that he desired for you to do this thing, and you would purposely in your heart say no. That's what I see from scripture. I never see somebody accidentally slip past God's will. Like, what do we think God's will is? Just this fickle thing in the wind, like wind, or like sand or something? 
You know what I mean? If, if God intends for you to do something, he'll let you know that he intends for you to do it. It's not going to be something that you can potentially accidentally overlook. You know what I mean? That's not how it is. So if you if God did reveal something that you were supposed to do and you purposely in, in intention in your heart that you weren't going to do it, then what you do at that point is you repent. This happened with Pastor, actually. Um, God, went, God wanted him to be uh, something in Africa. Um, sure. Yeah, some kind of a missionary with, with training or teaching or Bible schools. or I don't remember exactly. Regardless, whatever it was, he didn't go. And he lived some time in rebellion, but then he turned and repented, and now God placed him in an, a position, see what I mean, as a pastor. And believe me, there's there's no doubt in anyone's mind that, that God's call. I mean, many of us, is, it's been confirmed by many different things. I don't really have time to go into that, but see what I mean? He repented, and God, God gave him something else. God doesn't take your repentance and throw it to the wayside and say, you have to live the rest of your life in, in, in humility and shame. He doesn't say that, so... Um, or God reveals what he wants when it is time, however. Okay, God's, for instance, how many of you guys have been in a charismatic service where somebody comes up to you and says, God has great things for you, and this is one of those things, but not right now? Okay. Like, maybe. I'm not going to say that God never does that. But just be very wary when somebody comes up to you and says something that, that you don't have any, you haven't been praying about, you have no confirmation in your spirit, and you just say some random thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes God will tell you something that's down the road. King David is a great example of that. Okay? All right? However, when it's something that you haven't been praying about and is not confirmed in your spirit and somebody come, just randomly comes up to you and says, take it with a grain of salt. Just, just wait on it. Don't instantly s sell all your belongings and hop off to this crazy thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> just hold off. Um, yeah. A great, a great example of this actually is is King David had had it set in his heart to build this temple, and the prophet said, "Yeah, go ahead and do that." And then God tells him, "No, no, go back and tell him no." So he goes back and says, "No, no, no it's for your son to do this thing, You're, not for you." See what I mean? There, it was a good thing to build the temple, but it wasn't the right thing for David to build the temple. Does that make sense? I I, I was in grad school um, earlier. Has it only been? Has, has was that this year? Oh my gosh, it's been a long year. I was in grad school earlier this year, and it was a good thing to go to grad school, but it wasn't right for me right now, so I dropped out. See what I mean? It was a good thing, but just not the right thing for me right now. Does that make sense? Kind of? Yeah. And you'll know it in your spirit. So it's just some very quick misconceptions. There was, I didn't realize this when I wrote this, there is no group discussion in this. Oh my gosh. I am sorry, I just realized that just now. I spent so so long studying for this stupid thing that I forgot to put any kind of questions in it. I'm sorry. Next week there will be questions, I promise. Golly. Okay, so just some misconceptions. If I face adversity, this is a sign of whether I'm right or wrong. No. The truth is that a lot of times that you face, that, that you face uh, problems are because you're following God's will. Chuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Does any, is anyone is anyone actually think that, that it's just random thing that happened with, with Chuck right here right as we start the Oasis right as we're making headway in ministries right as we're doing the expansion on the, on the annex come on what did I say there's no such thing as chance there's no such thing as luck there's no such thing as fate okay don't don't be misled God knows God knows what he what he's called us to you know what I mean Anyways, um, oh my gosh, and don't even bring up last year. Whew, that was the hardest year, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> that was a terrible year. Anyways, if I mess up, I have to make up so God can use me. If you mess up accidentally, just keep seeking after God. If you purposely mess up, you repent and God does what God does. I mean, it's not something you can figure out. Um... But don't intentionally disobey. If God if God tells you to do something, I mean, just go do it. Don't don't put it off. Um, another misconception: I need a sign. You hear Christians talk about? Was it you who I was talking to about this? Or, Probably at some point. Do you have a good story about this? Because that would tell me if if it was you. Not, not right off the bat. Okay, so I don't know who it was then. I was talking to somebody, and they and they knew somebody who every single thing they always had to have some divine sign. And because they were looking so hard, 
And because they were looking so hard for the sign, they found them, of course. Like wow. driving down the street. I'm sorry. What? Are you no, I just agreed. Oh, like driving down the down the road and you see an advertisement for IHOP that says something about I don't know something, and you're like, oh, that's what I've been praying about. It's yeah. like, mm, <laughs> you know what I mean? Our uh, our pastor he used to say, don't ask to hear for voices because you'll hear voices. <laughs> right? No, but seriously though, that I think it was you then, because I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you look for anything hard enough, you're that's what you're going to find. You know, like, oh, this person is the most perfect person in the world. Then you get married and you're like, I hate this person. Why? Because you saw what you wanted to see. People yeah. do that about everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just what it's just how we work as people. If we want something bad enough, we'll convince ourselves that it is the perfect thing for us. You don't understand. This house that I can't afford is right for me. This car that I can't afford is God's will that I get this car. You see what I mean? It's just, no, it's not, though. It's not. <laughs> you got the car because you wanted. You got the house because you wanted. You bought that at the store because you wanted it. You know what I mean? Like, we need to stop lying to ourselves about God's yeah. will. Um, God has to give me special revelation every day. There's another misconception. That, you know, God has to basically give you the shining light from above and you, for you to have a one-on-one -on -one encounter for God anytime he wants you to do anything. I mean, it... <laughs> If you employed somebody, and every single time that there was a spill, they came up to you and said, should I, should I clean up that spill? W would you fire them? Yeah, I would. If, if I can't have an employer that actually thinks, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's a difference between trusting in God and being moved by, in, by, being moved by immobility. Yeah, that's a good way of saying that. <laughs> the, 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 trusting in God is where... You're depending on God in the situation, and you're leaning on Him from understanding, and you're and you're and you're you know you're leaving it up to Him and not trying to get it done before He does it. But then there's immobility. Im am I saying that right? Yeah. yeah. Being Im immobilized. Ah. Then there's being immobilized, which is where you're just sitting there not doing anything, and you're not waiting on God. There was a there was a word given about this last Sunday morning. Um, waiting on God isn't sitting there twiddling your thumbs. I don't remember the exact wording, but it, basically, it's not sitting there doing nothing. It's seeking after the Lord, and in that, and that is your waiting, and that is your is your um. Oh, I forgot how she, how she word. I even remember who said who gave the word. But anyways, I'm sure Ben record. Well, it wasn't recorded. It wasn't mic'd. <sighs> uh, anyways, it was something to do with that. Um, I wish I could remember it exactly. Oh, oh, Donna. Donna writes them all down. If you if you if you're real curious about this, go ask her. I, I bet you anything she wrote it down. Um. Yeah. God will guide me in major life decisions by my feelings. Basically, every time I feel something, it's God's will. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, God will impress things on your heart, okay? Like, that is a thing. However, when who wakes up happy and goes to sleep mad? Do you guys ever do that? Mm -hmm. I, I do that. So are you saying that God's will change from the morning to the evening? No, pro probably not, huh? God's will is probably something that doesn't change with passing of time, right? We, we could probably agree on that one, right? Um, so just because you have a feeling doesn't mean that that feeling is God's feeling. Does that, that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or by random words that people give you. I feel, I feel, no, 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 they don't say that. They say it like this. God told me to tell you that you need to go do this. It's like, well, I don't have any confirmation in my spirit. That's not something I've been praying about or feel impressed about. I'm kind of lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be real careful with that one. So God allows some things and he causes some other things. That's basically a good a good idea of, of all these misconceptions. So these are just some ideas to ask yourself about is this God's will. First, does it violate scripture? Check brought this one up. Does it violate scripture? Does it go against something that God's word clearly says? See what I mean? Um, does it hit gray areas? Well, the Bible doesn't say anything not about it. Well, isn't that kind of a gray area? The Bible doesn't say anything about pot. The Bible doesn't say anything about... What's another one that they always say? Um, we, were, we were actually talking about it a couple weeks ago. Um...
Dad gum, I can't remember. Uh well, anyways, I can't remember what we were talking about, but it was such a great example. Um, you know, if it, if it's something where you have to have to like scratch it, you know, like, well, I mean, God's word doesn't say anything not about it, you know. Well, well, I mean, you know what I mean. It, it, there comes a point when you need to just stop and say, I'm looking for an excuse for what I'm believing, rather than looking to God's word to give me direction. You know what I mean? God's word isn't something that you go to to reaffirm something you're already doing and you want to believe. It's something you go to to challenge your current beliefs. Mm. See what I mean? Um, does it go against what I know to be true? Am I trying to find God's will past something that God, I already know isn't God's will? You know what I mean? Um, oh, God wants me to uh, move into the men's center. And create it and turn it into an orphanage. Not knocking orphanages. However, God's kind of directing us towards this whole men's center thing. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's a little bit, um, I don't know. Plus, Pastor R is the, you know, the spiritual head of the church. And we're all heading that direction. Plus, I mean, it's not ours to use as we see fit. There's someone who already purchased it. See what I mean? So there's all these different things. It's like, well, deductive reasoning says no. Um, does it go against authority? God places some people in your life not not to keep you in line, but to but not as a thing to beat you over the head with, but as a thing to help you live the life God's called you to. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. People who... Okay, I, I, I think I'm going to sell everything that I have and just start a chicken farm. Well, I have an authority. Her name's Gracie. Spouses can't just make decisions like that without their spouses okay. See what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's a... It, does that make sense? God brings by authority in your life to, to kind of help you with this. It's for your own good, basically. Um, have I had counselors in my decision? Or am I just making a decision? Did I talk to anybody about this before I made this decision? Now, I'm not talking about finding those people who always agree with everything you say. Right. I'm talking about people who actually challenge your view. Mm -hmm. Did you actually find out what the people against your idea had to say about it? See what I mean? Don't find people who tickle your ears. Find people who will tell you the truth. Like... Mm, I don't think that's a very good idea, Michael. Um, you've got a wife and a kid, and I'm just kind of concerned that your chicken business might not do so great. You might want to want to think about holding off, or, or or maybe praying about it a little bit longer before you go hopping off to that. See what I mean? <laughs> Rather than saying oh, that's a great idea, Michael, sell everything you have. See what I mean? That just <laughs> um, do I have to act impatiently from my own power? Is it something that I have to immediately hop on? Because that's what salesmen do. You have to act right now to get this deal. I found God doesn't work on impatience. I found that to be true. He doesn't like wait for you for that one time when your money's already tied up in something else and say, yes, now I want you to hop into this business deal that you have no business being in because it's totally immoral with the money that you don't have. See what I mean? Like, nah, no, no, God doesn't do these things. Um, he opens doors and he guides us. Now sometimes, and there was a question about this before, um, Sometimes God will ask you to step out in faith about something, but when every decision you make is a leap out in faith, it might just be you. See what I mean? It, it might just be you. God wanted me to spend this three hundred dollars here, and they wanted me to spend this five hundred dollars here, and then mm, maybe I have seen it possible a thing where a guest speaker comes in and and God tells them to specifically give them something. I have seen that. But when every single time a guest speaker comes in, it just so happens that they tickle your feelings and make you make you cry and make you feel all happy and everything, that you have to give something that's beyond your means to give. Hmm. One of the people that had to give, I know, is from God because they hated the person. They didn't want to give them anything. They didn't want to hear them, hear them speak. But at the end, God told them to give something any great, very grudgingly. But. I mean, hey, see what I mean? That's something you know is God's will, because if it's something you don't even want, yeah, it's probably going to be God's will. Um, am I relying on mystic signs, or was it a clear call? Was it something absolutely clear, 
or are you relying on these like mystical things? Oh, well, I was praying, and then that same day on the radio I heard this, and then I was watching a movie and they said this, and then I was driving and I saw... Or was it a clear calling? Here's what people do. They get all worked up in their spirit about something. Like, for instance, let's say you already have a heart for kids. And then you watch a bunch of videos about orphans. God's calling me to start, orph start an orphanage. Well, God did tell us all to take care of the widows and the orphans and the, and the least among us. Yes, absolutely. However, it might just be your feelings. Getting, the, getting away with you. Not that taking care of orphans is bad. You see what I'm saying? So... Clear calls, not mystic signs. Does it glorify God or self? Does it, is it something that, that, that is something that you want? I'm receiving this house. Well, isn't that kind of a quinky dink that it's not some run-down shack, but it's a house that you really wanted in a really upper-class neighborhood? I think probably not. Um, or does it glorify God? See what I mean? A little different there. I feel like God wants me to make a commitment to Teen Challenge that every month to give. Okay, well that's that might be something. See what I mean? Especially if it's within your means to actually give. Okay, or if you could pick up some extra hours to give or something. Okay. Um, or is it something I've always wanted? It just so happens that God's will is a Lamborghini. I mean, come on. <laughs> Uh, and then lastly, why do you think it's God's will? What caused you to, st to, to, to start up this question of, is, is it God, God's will? See what I mean? And if you go through this, this list of questions, it's not exhaustive, but if you go through them, it'll usually help you put a stop to any um, impatient decision. Okay? Like signing a loan on anything. I'm not talking about car loans. I'm not talking about house loans. I mean any loan. Any kind of co-signing for anything. I mean, even school loans. I mean, just second guesses. I'm still paying on my college school loans, and I graduated like I don't know, two years ago. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. So you know, this is something where any time, just stop and think about it. And what people do is they get their feelings tied up into something. Well, I'll give you a great example. Um, oh, my child is trying to get this loan, so I should co-sign it for them. My sister or brother is crazy. Oh my goodness! Actually, that was something that just happened a couple months ago. My sister needs needs this loan. I should co-sign it for her. No, you shouldn't. If she can't manage her account very well, you shouldn't join into her poor management skills. See what I mean? Like you're making the problem worse. You're basically saying yes. I see that God's trying to work character in you financially, so I'm going to remove that from God, and I'm going to stick my nose into it and get myself into financial problems so that I can help you be immature. Basically what you're saying. Not a good idea. See what I mean? Go through this list before you start wondering is it God's will. Because a lot, a lot of things in our day-to-day -day life, God expects us to use this. He gave it to us for a reason. Okay. I know in Christianity we talk a lot about loving God with all of our hearts, but sometimes we forget to love him with our minds and think. You know what I mean? Should I go out and buy a brand new car? I don't have the money for a brand new car, so I'm betting that's going to be a no. See what I mean? Use your brain. Use your brain. I don't know why people make it either either you're trusting in God or you're using your brain. You can trust in God and use your brain. It, it is a possibility. So just the last slide here. Um, any questions about anything we talked about? I had no. I, I had. I got so caught up in the lesson, I completely forgot to put any kind of interaction. So it's basically me droning on for an hour. <laughs> no questions or anything? Well, I, you're talking about using your, you know, your brain. Uh, but the Bible tells us to be like-minded with Christ. Yeah. So as long as we are being like-minded with Christ, we are, we are going to, and then that's why it's so important that we stay in Scripture. Yeah. And that the, that, that the will of God is revealed in Scripture. No. And the more that we're like-minded with Christ, no. the more we will think like Him and yeah. make good decisions. That's actually a great point. That is a great point that I completely circumnavigated. Did you guys understand what she was just saying? Because, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, write that down in your paper. That's important. The more we seek after God and the more... You know, we read his word and whatnot. The Holy Spirit changes our thinking, and we're able to make more wise decisions. Like James said, he's able to give us that wisdom. That's just a great point. I mean, I didn't. I don't even have that in here. Wow.
<sighs> this lesson wasn't very good. I forgot to include some stuff. There was no interaction whatsoever. I interacted. Okay, let, let's let's turn this into some interaction. Since I since I already didn't have anything, any questions in here at all. Why do I feel like I'm wasting my life? Why do you think you, when you when you get those feelings of oh I'm wasting my life? Why do you think you have those feelings? I think because you see accomplishments of other people. Ooh, like jealousy? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what I was gonna say. We yeah. compare ourselves to other people and what they they're doing or what they've done. And okay. We don't measure up and I, we think. What am I doing with my life? I'm such a failure, and this person is so start, accomplished. And you start to thinking, what are you doing wrong, and all these other... I'm so sorry, guys. I had no idea that my greatness was causing you guys so much pain. <laughs> 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 Just kidding, but seriously, please, get to me. <laughs> I think a lot of times we look past, and we're thinking, I had so many dreams growing up, and I haven't done one mm. of them. Yeah, you know, Ooh. the different dreams you've had. I do know what you mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anybody else? Or anything else? You, if you guys, you guys have something else, you, you can still say something. I think sometimes... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It could just be because we're human. Okay. We tend to think... Overthink well, we things. Yeah, I think you, I think you're more on target than than you than you think you are. I think yeah, that's the one I do a lot. You know what I mean? I just overthink things to death. I think sometimes we just get impatient. Yeah. We think. God, why have not, why has, why haven't, why hasn't something happened yet? And you were talking about Moses, you know. No. Yeah. Moses was already eighty by the time, you know. God he was called even him. older than my dad. And so I think we get impatient. Like, God, something spectacular should have been done with me mm. now, or I should have done something amazing by now, mm. you know? Mm. And and we just get impatient when, you know, God may still be working in us to bring us to a certain calling or mm. whatever. So I think a lot of times just impatience and, and feeling like we're getting old and we're burning daylight here, God. Right. The time's almost up. Yeah, like like because like, when we're little, like we like time seems to last forever. Like you, like your next birthday never comes. But then when you get older, like it flies by so fast, and so you just feel like you never get anything done. Mm. It's just going by. Mm. Reality hits you hard, bro. I think another thing, it, it's not really an answer to that question. It was something I thought of. Is um, this this was something that they actually taught us in GED, and it's something that's stuck with me, is we have, like, a big goal for our life, mm. but we ignore all the little goals mm. that you have to get to to get to that big one, mm. and then we give up a lot of times. Yeah, ah. sure. Yeah. The ah. steps that have to be... We want to, we want to we skip want the, over A through D. Yeah, get get to the big one. Or A through... Right. Yeah. You know, before I went to college, they said a thousand times they had people who come out from the college and, and talk at youth camp, and they said a billion, million, zillion times, this isn't the, the finish line, this is the launching point. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's the stupidest thing. But now I, now that you just said that, it just clicked what they meant. This is one of those steps to fulfill the thing that you've got going on in your life. I got it. Wow. See, I graduated not knowing what the heck they were talking about. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Clean up my brains in the sidewalk. <laughs> wow. Anybody? Anything else? Wow. <laughs> I think also another one is um, death or a new life, uh, near death experiences. Okay. Like if someone dies close to you, you, you know, you think, wow, I could have died, you know. Yeah. Or you yourself, you know, have a near death experience. I haven't done anything with my life yet. What am I doing? I'm wasting it, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. In fact, I think I'll even add on to that. Maybe not just a near-death experience, 
Definitely that. Definitely that. But even, even just a traumatic experience for us, yeah. like a divorce, yeah. um, or uh, yeah, divorce is really what was going through my head. Because I, I, I knew somebody who when they got when they got a divorce, I mean they just you know oh, I'm not doing anything. They tried to kick it into hyper hyperdrive and get done all kinds of different things. Yeah. See what I mean? And it didn't work, and so they got kind of discouraged. But I mean, I'm sorry. Any anything else? No. Um, life stages. Um, I think this touch. Oh. I think this touches on with what Ben was saying. Um, different ages that you hit, you're going to feel more or less so accomplished. Um, different different uh, events in your life. Like, for instance, nobody likes getting there and nobody likes to admit that it's coming, but that stage in life where your parents pass away. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a hard time of, hard, hard time of your life. It's a time, time of transition. Those people who were all-knowing when you were kids are suddenly not even there anymore. It's just, it's just change. It's hard to cope with it. Um, and it's a different life stage, you know, and then you are becoming that all-wise knowing person. Like Micah, for Micah, I'm that all-knowing -wi all wise person right now. It's kind of difficult for me to even imagine myself as that person because my dad's still in the picture. See what I mean? Like, it hasn't registered that, oh, that old man, I'm now becoming that old man. See what I mean? Like, oh, things are changing. <laughs> but, you know, life stages. Uh, yeah, Zach, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, disobeying, not listening to God's prompting. When, when we when we willfully disobey, that can obviously make us feel like we're wasting our life. Obviously, um, and by the way, this is not an exhaustive list. This is not an exhaustive list. Exhaustive list. Um, impatience, Serena. In fact, Serena, you used that exact same word, impatience. Um, uh, laziness or neglecting potential when you're simply not doing anything with your life. When rather than doing anything productive, you watch TV all day, play video games all day, whatever, fill in the blank with whatever it is that you do all day. Um, and that can obviously make you feel like you're wasting your life because, I mean, well, you kind of are. I mean, if you have potential, if you have the ability to do something and you choose to do nothing, see what I mean, that's – you're obviously not going to feel content by choosing to do nothing. See what I mean? So um, mental or spiritual issues, anxiety, depression, fill in the blank. You know, whenever those kinds of things, especially people with things like depression, that kind of stuff, they're going to always have this this constant thing. I mean, not all of them, obviously, but there's going to be this resurfacing thing of just kind of looking down on yourself in different areas. And people with anxiety do it too. I mean, you just kind of go from thing to thing and, and see all your failures and all all the bad things in your life. Um, and so, um, Regret or guilt. Somebody already touched on this. I think it was Gracie... Somebody touched on this about just having regret or guilt about the past or but no, that was you. No. no? I think it was you. Who? You. I, I thought I was just referencing what somebody else said, no? I think it was you. Wise guy, I listen to that guy. <laughs> uh, okay. Well then it was me. Uh, regret or guilt, um, kind of oops, kind of um, feeling like you missed out on, on, on things or didn't meet your potential, maybe, whatever. Um, and then not seeking the Lord. I've noticed a lot of times when we choose not to keep prayer and, and, and reading the Bible and, and, and worship as key priorities in our life, we just kind of spiritually feel this apathy, you know what I mean? And we just kind of feel like, you know, eh. And then because of that spiritual apathy, we just kind of let other things slide in our lives, and you know what I mean? And then we just get to this place where, oh my goodness, what's going on? You know, we just kind of, just, oh, uh, but yeah, but obviously this is not exhaustive list. I really liked your guys' answers. I really like them. Um, so what's my purpose in life? How do I know what God's will is? First off, it's not mystical. You do what's right. You seek God and trust, and He guides. And the Holy Spirit aids you in discerning what is right and what is just a good thing. For instance, David Stemple, I already talked about this, um, how it wasn't the right thing for him to do. Um... So your purpose in life is to glorify God in whatever it is you do. Obey Him. If if you have a special calling on your life, He'll make it known to you. He He's not He's not waiting for you to stumble. God will give you the opportunities to 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 see to 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 do what He's called you to do. I mean, oh sorry. And that's that's the that's the summation of, of how do I know what God's will is? What's my purpose in life? 
glorify God in what you do. That that's that's God's will for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's real simple, but we make it so so big and so ah. If God calls you to something special, you'll know. Okay, you'll know. It'll be your purposeful intent to not do it that it doesn't get done. Okay, does that make sense? God will place it on your heart. You'll know beyond a doubt what it is to, that you have to do, and you'll just choose not to do it. So, uh, any questions, you guys? I mean, any, is anybody writing down anything from the slide? Yes. Okay. Yeah, God's will is a lot simpler than I always thought it was as a kid. <laughs> a lot simpler. Um, so just some final thoughts. Salvation is foreknown. And God predestines us according to who he foreknows will accept. So that is something that... So you know, I was talking about this. God's will in, in regards to salvation. Um, some events are predestined. For instance, Jesus' second coming. Okay, um, Life is not predestined. Okay, Life events and stuff. You you can you can choose what to do with your life. Do you know what I mean? You can either follow God or you can not follow God. You can do you know what I mean? All these different things. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, um, now when I say salvation is foreknown, why didn't but salvation is predestined? Because God knows what the final outcome will be, but there's no way you could know. No way. So, as Hebrews says, today if you hear His voice, turn from your wickedness and repent. Okay, so um, life is not predestined. Some callings are predestined. Moses, for instance. In, in fact, uh, Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 9, about how Abraham was called to be the root of the nation of, of, of the salvation. Remember that? Um, and he says that, that, that God's election is, is um, I forget how he says it, but basically that you can't, can't cast it off. Abraham was, was, um, was called to the specific thing. He was predestined for it. Does that make sense? It's something God specifically ca called Abraham out. So, um, okay. And this is that book that I that I was uh, referencing. It's by Bruce Walt Waltke, I think is how you say his name. Um, really just a proven scholar. Um, I haven't read this book yet. Um, however, I am very familiar with his works, and I read a lot of summations of it. It's on my wish list to get it soon. Um, but I, I read the highlights of the book, some reviews of the book. So, I mean, I, I have a general idea of it, and I know the conclusions that he makes, but I don't know all the stuff that happens in between his conclusion and his thesis. Okay? Um, so, uh, I'm not condoning everything he says in the book because I haven't read it yet. Okay? Um, but Finding the Will of God by, by Bruce Walke. And that's it. The question of the week. What single passage confirms the deity of Christ the most to you? What single passage confirms the deity of Christ the most to you? There is one verse in the whole Bible that you could say, yes, that is the one that to me means that Jesus is fully God. What would it be? Sorry about not having much discussion on this one, guys. I'll, I'll change that next week. I didn't even have a hook at the beginning. Hmm. And they call me a teacher. Pitiful. You know what it was? I know what it was. I received one too many, uh, um, um, one too many people praised me for Sunday last Sunday night, and so this is this is God <laughs> bringing me back. <laughs> if somebody could say you'll get there, bud. You'll get there, bud. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and it all's all's back as it should be.